a city that looks for the valley of death and its glory has never been
Spirit, but receive the Son of God and receive pardon for their souls. And the Lord is changing lives each day throughout the world as sinners yield themselves to the Holy Ghost. See 
and all its beauty. Many stately mansions daily you may see. But without great wealth, I know I'll never own one. And you will neither if you're no more rich than me. But if your soul will look beyond what man is building, you can see what earthly mortals cannot see. For on the other side of Jordan there's construction On a mansion being built just for me Just wait till you see my brand new home Wait till you see its beauty rare There's nothing down here that can compare Upon foundations That are man-made And will someday pass away It won't be built Where the storms of life can batter Where the storm clouds Often hide the light of day But the very cornerstone Of God is my foundation The root of David, Christ the Lord, my coming King. What a welcome and homecoming there awaits me. And I'm expecting any day just to move right in. Just wait till you see my brand new. There's nothing down here that can compare Just wait till you see My brand new home My heavenly Father's building me And I'm gonna occupy for free Just wait till you see My brand new home Just wait till you see My brand new home Wait till you see It's beauty rare Well there's nothing down here That could ever compare Just wait till you see My brand new home My heavenly father's building me And I'm gonna occupy for free Just wait till you see My brand new Rain from above, God rides on 
try to stand tall in faith When you can't go under and you can't get around So you wait
and understand There's not a tear he has not seen On him you can safely lean So just turn it all over to the Lord Confide. From fears you cannot hide You must learn to turn it over to the Lord For Satan will destroy all your peace, your hope, your joy If you don't turn it over to the Lord Just turn it all over to the Lord He always cares and understands There's not a tear He has not seen On Him you can safely lean So just turn it all over to the Lord there's not a tear he has not seen On him you can safely be So just turn it all over to the Lord Just turn it all over to the Lord
We're a couple of minutes early, but that's all right. It's better to be two minutes early than five minutes late, huh? How many of you know God is good? Back in the early 1960s, Howard Goodman sang this song. And then in the 70s, Jimmy Swagger brought it back out again. I love it because I know that everybody in this house at some time or another has had to go through a valley. Some people have had to go through problems and disappointments. But I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that whatever we're facing, God's going to get us through it. Could I hear it? Amen. I'm pressing on through this world of cares. Nobody knows what a load I've had. But for my Lord, I bravely stand. Cause I know that my Lord's gonna lead me out of this pilgrim land. That I, can. And I know that my Lord's gonna lead me out of this pilgrim land. Gospel way, oh, the gospel way. Just, long just long enough to kneel and pray. To kneel and pray. I'm going to cling to his precious hand, and I know that my Lord's going to lead me out of this pilgrim land. Yes, I. I can. And, the best I can. and I know that my Lord's Lord going to lead me out of this pilgrim land. Sing it again. I know. I know my Lord's going to lead me out. I know my Lord's going to lead me out. I'm going to pray. I'm pray. Do, the Do the best that I can. And I know. Yes, I know the Bible Lord's gonna lead me out of this pilgrim land. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's list of shore.
shake hands with about 357 people and let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God tonight, would you?
with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath of the living water, such a marvelous mystery. Lift your hands up toward heaven right now. Just lift them up toward heaven. You just well get used to it. It's what you're going to do when you get there.
want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Over every heart and every mind. I know. I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. within his presence I speak Jesus I speak Jesus I speak Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah
do you find it? It's in his presence. Isn't it? There is joy beyond all measure. Sing it, Lord. And at his feet, peace. give the Lord a hand clap offering a praise in the house. How gracious and how great God is. Pastor Bates is coming in just a moment, but before he does, we're going to receive the offering. And I'm going to tell you how we're doing this. Every penny that you give goes to the man of God. We are not taking out any expenses or anything like that. I'm gonna tell you something, I don't consider this an expense, this is an investment. There's a difference 
Anybody that knows anything about finance knows there's a difference between an investment and an expense. So we're believing God tonight that we're sowing into the ministry that God has called Pastor Tommy Bates to. Last night, <laughs> I checked the, uh, our uh, YouTube page. There was, I don't remember, was it, um, I'd almost get it and find out. But it was right at 2,000 people that watched this service last night. I think it was 1.9. Over 1,900 people watched this service last night. We've been getting phone calls. We've been getting text messages. We've been getting all kinds of things. about, And some of them don't say but one word. Glory! That's all they say, you know? But we know what they're saying, don't we? The glory of the Lord was in this house. Would you get your offering ready? Get your offering ready. These guys are going to play some Holy Ghost music here in just a minute. I got my hand doing up here. But anyway, they're going to play some Holy Ghost music here in a minute. We're going to believe God that as you bring the offering forward, God's going to bless you in a marvelous way. God's people that love the Lord are faithful people, aren't they? So if you got your offering ready, if you have, stand to your feet. You got to stand up to bring it up here. This is an act of worship. The Bible says that God told Moses, those that are of a willing heart, let them bring a free will offering. That's where you get that. Free will means that you give it out of a willing heart. Father, we thank you for the blessing of being able to assemble together here with people of like precious faith. We thank you for their sacrifice of time and effort to come. And they do it because they love you. They love your word. They love the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we just pray, Lord, that tonight, if there's anybody here that's not saved, that they would receive Jesus as Lord and Savior before they leave this house. And we pray, mighty God, that you would bless the offering, that you bless the gift and the giver. Bless the man of God who is the target of this offering tonight. We sow it into the ministry of Pastor Tommy Bates, and we ask that your hand would be upon every one of us, and that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, that the anointing of God will rest upon the remainder of this service. Do what you will, Lord. Accomplish what you want in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Play, fellas. Come on, bring your offering up and let's worship well, the Lord together. I am
special prayer after a while as the Lord leads pastor but I want you to worship the Lord and magnify God put your hands together one more time as Pastor Tony Bates comes to bring the word tonight well praise the Lord you can be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord so good to be together Oh, thank the Lord that sun came out. I saw that snow coming down. I said, God, I got I to gotta get home. I don't want no snow on that Jellicoe Mountain. That's the biggest fear of Kentuckians going into Tennessee. They won't get back. <laughs> but uh, we're so glad you're here. We're so thankful. Uh, just, uh, just a few things to help me uh, just organize my perspective of, of who you are. How many of you watch us on Daystar? Anybody watch us on Daystar? Well, that's quite a few. How many of you watch us on uh, YouTube? Any uh, YouTube or Facebook or any of that? All right. Anybody seen us at Brother Swaggart's? It looks like the same people do the same things. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we're just so grateful to have you with us. You know, there's a little feller here. I'm gonna, it won't take long, and I'll be blessed. And I, How many would like for me to get a blessing? Amen. Well... I'm going to get, he's from Fondy Church. Come on up here. I've never heard him play the piano. I've never heard him do anything. Oh, my goodness. He is ready. He is ready. Why don't you, why don't you tell us what you think about that service last night? Well, it was pretty good. That's all I got to say. Now, uh, what song did you say that you do, There's a Way to Cross Over? You want to sing it or you want me to sing it? Okay, well, get, get me about a G, and I'll do a verse with you. Oh, this is a privilege. Get up here, Robbie. And Robbie, get up here and take a, do something. Do something, Robbie. In this life here before us, many trials we face. Oh, we're tested and tempted just to give up the race. Oh, then I hear Jesus whisper. for this tonight. Hallelujah. Come here, buddy. So how old are you? You're 10 years old. You know what? I don't know if you all know this or not, but these, these uh, big newfangled churches, when they go to get musicians, you know where they have to go get them? From the very strict either apostolic, Pentecostal, or holiness. You know why? 
It takes the anointing to produce this. And they can't produce it. I know it for a fact. Because we got the, that church that's up there in Cincinnati. It's a drink and a sponge you've ever seen in your life. Every one of their musicians were raised Pentecostal because they can't get anybody else that knows how to play right. So you're 10. I'm 67. So I lived 57 years before you got here. So if the Lord tarries, you're going to live 57 years without me being here. So during that 57 years, I just want you to just cling to the old path. Do you plan on doing that? Betty, I plan on doing that. I really do. I plan on doing that. Are you going to walk the straight and narrow? Yes, I will. You're not going to find a wife at the Hootenanny or the Shindig, are you? don't plan to. All right. Well, that's right. If you don't plan to, it's not going to happen. You don't. <clears throat> you don't accidentally. You know all this stuff, people falling into sin? That's a lie. You don't fall into adultery. Why, you had her number in your phone a good month or two. You'd, you'd been cheating around on the side. You just, you just finally got caught. You know, people, people act like the devil's got this great big power and he just grabs you by the throat and throws you down. No, you make decisions. And we're all weak. We can all make wrong decisions. I'm not saying we can't make a wrong decision. But I'm telling you one thing. We don't need to blame so much that the devil made me do it. Because uh, God has given us power. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I want to thank all of our partners uh, that are here and those of you that partner with the ministry. It's $25 a month to partner, but I want to thank you. I've been preaching for the last six years four times on Sunday, 9, 10, 45, 12, 30, and 6 o'clock on Sunday night. Our sanctuary, uh, the Pew Company, when we, you know, we were the largest independent Pentecostal church in the state of Kentucky back in the 70s. and uh, But the Pew Company said we could seat 1,000, but by the time we got those wider seats, because we need them, I won't say any more about that. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, we can only get like 850 in there. So with folding chairs, we can pack it out. We've, we've got 12, 1,400 in there before, but when we had the McCamey's, we had them. I think we... I think we had them all the way up to the altar. They were looking straight up all the way during the, during the song service. But I just want everyone to help me pray. We're living in a very difficult time. We're living in a time when uh, those in authority are doing exactly what this one world government wants us to do. And uh, it's going to continue. And, uh, and it might even continue a second term uh, because the, the power that's uh, making everything go the way it's going, this, this uh, one world generation loves it. The tree huggers, they love it. And uh, the people that hate fossil fuels love it. And uh, so we'll keep on letting... Uh, Coal mining camps of eastern Kentucky dissolve and people have to move out. And in, I think in Harlan County alone, there was 10 high schools and they're down now to two, I think. Something like that. And then buy our coal from China. If you don't know that, that's, you need to look it up. You need to find out what's going on in this world. And if what we don't get from China, we get from Russia. And both of them hate us and want to kill us. And they hate the world and want to kill it. But uh, that doesn't change God and His power. Sometimes when the fire gets hotter, He gets right in the middle of it. Oh, glory to God. So we're, we're just so thankful for that. And we have a brother here. I introduced him the last time I was here, I think, but I'm going to do it again. Brother David Baker. Stand up there, David. I cannot even tell you. You know, we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
I don't have the pictures ready here, but when we showed the pictures at church, it stirred faith up in people. They cried, they cried, and I'm going to do it again because every time I see it, it reminds me. He had cancer. It was coming out of his jaw, drinking with a straw. The insides, he was, he was a dead man, giving up to die. His eye was bulging out. Look at him now. Gone. Thank you, brother. And you need to talk to this family. Gone by a miracle, by the power of God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never changes. And I'm really blessed tonight because about 1973 or 4, which one was it? 73. There was a young man. He went to Hickory Grove Baptist Church, and I went to Community Pentecostal, the holiness people. And he played basketball. Our, uh, I think our lockers were pretty close together. It's two or three different times. And we, you know, I, you know, I went to the prayer meetings, and it was the Baptist people. That's the only one that had prayer meetings in the school. And it was founded by the Baptists back in the 30s, something like that, 40s. And I went with them, and I'm telling you, that, that prayer meeting grew to a couple hundred or more in the gymnasium, maybe more than that. And I made a big mistake. Bill was working with the young people in the Baptist church. And there was a couple of the sisters in the Baptist church that had gotten the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, there was a revival that broke loose over on, the, on 25. And uh, Bill wanted to go. And I said, well, I'll go with you. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, he got set on fire. His life's totally rearranged. Ended up he getting ordained to the Assembly of God, an Assembly of God pastor. And I'm so glad to have this uh, basketball playing Simon Kenton pioneer here from back in my day. Stand up there, Brother Bill, so they know who I'm talking about. So good to have you with us. So thankful for the good things of God. So thankful for how that he moved upon us and the zeal that God had given to us in that young day. I'm going to sing just a little bit. I'm going to put this good mic on there. Oh, you know what? Let's do something. We didn't do this yet. Oh, that thing's on, so how am I going to get it off? Just unplug it. Charlie, you are so smart. <laughs> Why don't you turn around and... Now, you don't have to shake hands if you don't want to catch a virus or something. But you won't get anything from smiling. But look at somebody, two or three people, just say, I'm glad to be here tonight. Hallelujah. Troubles brought me to my knees But I 
just came to talk with you, Lord. You've answered a million prayers or more. tomorrow's task I have no special favor to ask I just came to talk with you Lord I just came to talk are made of gold In that land won't be no pain I wonder
just like a river they say and I wonder wonder what they're doing there now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Kia G. Mm. He said never make it. He said I'd surely fall But here I am on Tuesday night I've got victory over it all I said I'm tired of you Satan Oh yes I am You've had me bound away too long I'm gonna lift my hand toward heaven oh, oh, oh I'm gonna sing me a victory song He told me not to sing He said whatever you do don't you shout But I'm gonna take the word of God Try Cause sometimes you just gotta say I'm tired of you Satan You've had me bound Way too long Can I get a witness? Can I get a hallelujah? How about a glory? I'm gonna lift my hands toward heaven song you know after COVID after COVID I'm telling you when it would it, it, it mean before it was really officially you know over like that if it is over when I first started going back to the churches it was like resurrecting the dead I never seen anything like it it was something like you couldn't believe they were disappointed because some of them didn't get the president they wanted and they thought they were in the great tribulation and I had to show them it's not the great tribulation. And God don't send revival on a Democrat or a Republican. Some said if this one gets in, we're going to have the great tribulation. They're wrong. They prophesied the wrong president and then prophesied the wrong outcome. The poor church has been plumb beat. But the Bible said the joy of the Lord your strength Philip had four daughters that prophesied I named them Euline, Eileen, Josephine and Irene when I was preaching when I was young I named them four different names I said one played they all had long ponytails wore shirtwaist dresses and they all, they all one of them played the mandolin one played the guitar one played the banjo one played the bass the Bible said they went down to Philippi and when they got done holding a revival down there, there was great joy in that city. I listen to these young people a lot of times and sometimes I can't hardly bear to hear them sing because there's no joy in their singing. You can call me hyper if you want to, but I read in that Bible and that Bible said the joy of the Lord is my strength. And the Bible said with joy I draw waters out of the wells of salvation. I can only sing so much about, about, uh, about how, you know, how desperate I am. I'm desperate, I'm desperate, I'm desperate, I'm desperate. Well, I am desperate. But there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. So this is the song I would sing. I would come in and I'm telling you, it looked like everybody was on spiritual respirators. It looks like they all had IVs on in the spirit. 
They were just there pale and peaked as they could be. They were just sitting there, oh, Wuhan, China. Wuhan sent us a virus. And all, I mean, and it was bad, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. I know it was bad. I had to do funerals in houses. Kentucky was very strict. We didn't have church for 12 weeks. And we couldn't even go. And then we had to only allow 40% of our seating. Had to carry the seats out. But praise God, during that time, I preached preached on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night for 12 weeks. I held 60 nights of service. I refused, I refused to let that devil walk on me. So wherever I went, I sung this. Oh, listen to me, devil. Here's what I'm gonna do. You walked on gonna walk on you I said I'm tired of you Satan you've had us bound too long I'm gonna lift my hands toward heaven I'm gonna sing help me sing Kathy I might need help on this I'm gonna sing me a victory song hallelujah you said I'd never make it. You said I'd surely fall. But here I am on a Tuesday night. Got victory over it all. I'm tired of you, Satan. You've had me bound away too long. I'm going to raise my hands I'm going to raise my hand toward heaven. I'm going to sing me a victory song. You said that I would make it by the great power above. That's why you went to Calvary and washed me with your blood. I said, I'm tired of you, Satan. You've had me bound too long. I'm going to raise my hand toward heaven. I'm going to sing me a victory song. Satan comes against you. He forms a mighty wall. Just march like old brother Joshua. I'm telling you, that wall's gonna fall. I'm tired of you, Satan. You've had me bound too long. I'm gonna raise my hand toward heaven. I'm gonna sing me a victory song. Everybody listen to me, Satan. Say it good and loud. Listen to me, devil. Here's what I'm going to do. You walked on me long enough. I'm going to walk on you. I said I'm tired of you, Satan. You've had me bound away too long. I'm going to raise my hand toward heaven. I'm going to sing me a victory song. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You can be seated tonight. Brother Robbie, come up and come up and, and this is Brother Robbie Grubbs. He goes to our church. He's born in Harlan County, Kentucky. And uh, the Lord's just blessed him. He's got a call on his life to be a worldwide missionary. He's 29 years old. He's engaged, getting married in September, so he's not available. But Nick is with me, and Nick is available, but he hasn't finished baking yet. He needs to be in the oven a little longer because he's only 16. But you can, you can look in the oven every now and then. Just, he's just not available yet. But uh, Robbie went to Barberville Youth Camp at uh, 16 years old. 16 years old. He had a speech impediment. And because of that, he was isolated himself and basically lived an introverted lifestyle, a complete introverted lifestyle. But as the power of God moved upon him, he came to the altar in prayer. And just as real as that cancer come off of your body, God can heal you spirit, soul, and body. He went to that altar, he went to that altar, and when he prayed, he got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, called to preach, and immediately his tongue was loosed, and the speech impediment is gone. 
He has been in nearly 30 nations, or over 30, 30, 31 nations of the world all around. I'm talking about China, Pakistan, India, you name it, he's been there. His heart is for missions. And uh, if you're here and you're a pastor and you would, you know, you, you say, well, we don't know exactly where to put missions in. He's on our monthly support. And I just want to throw that, throw, throw that in for him. I said, Robbie, I never hear you say anything about it, so I'm going to say something about it tonight. But before I preach, Brother Robbie, if you'd just say something, let the people know how good that the Lord is. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's all give God a great hand clap of praise. Amen. He is so good. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 16, for I am unashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. What is the gospel? It's the good news. What's the good news? Is that God loves you. What does that mean? It means that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who is that son? Somebody shout Jesus. He gave Jesus for you. And I want every person in this room to know if you are lost, if you are backslidden, if you're hurting, call on Jesus. Amen. How do we get saved? The Bible says you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. What is confession? It's repentance. Salvation is more than just me giving you a prayer to say. But you have to repent and say, God, forgive me for these things I've been doing. But the Bible declares, if you will do that, you will be saved today. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Oh, God's going to bless somebody tonight. God's going to heal somebody tonight. God's going to baptize somebody in the Holy Ghost tonight. I believe it with all my heart. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Can I tell you, faith needs a moment, and this is your moment tonight. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. It's not just, oh, when God wants to save me, he'll save me. He wants to save you right now. Hallelujah. I pray for a lot of people to be baptized in God's spirit. And I hate it when people say, well, God will fill me when he feels like it. No, friend, he wants to fill you right now. He feels like it right now. And it's the same thing with healing. If you come in here and you need healing in your mind, body, spirit, wherever it is, it's not tomorrow, it's not next week, it wasn't yesterday. No, today is the day. He took 39 stripes on the cross and shed blood so you could be healed right now. Hallelujah. Can somebody lift up their hand and say, God, I believe you want to touch me right now. I believe you want to save me right now. God, we pray a release of faith in the name of Jesus we pray somebody would be set free in the name of Jesus somebody would be filled with the Holy Ghost God do it for the glory of Jesus in this house in your name we pray amen 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 hallelujah hallelujah let's all stand tonight if you're able we're going to be reading out of Revelation chapter 12 uh, No, we're not. It's Revelation chapter 19. I don't know why my Bible was on there. I thought, no, that don't look right. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. It's good to, like I said, I can't say enough. And thank you all. I love to see the, the holiness people, the church of God people, assembly of God people, people that love the Lord. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, a garment, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Just for a few moments tonight, I want to look at verse 13. His name is called the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this night, and I'm asking you, Lord, to guide my words God, my words, Lord, because your, your Bible said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Let this word be preached with love, with mercy, compassion, and as you teach me in the scripture, let it be preached with demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. And I give you all the praise and all the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just for a few moments tonight, we're dealing with the subject, and his name is called the Word of God. You see, God created us in his image and in his likeness. That word image means the mirrored reflection. Nothing in creation looks like God but you. God don't look like a whale. He don't look like a zebra. He don't look like a camel. He don't look like a peacock. He don't look like anything but you. You are the mirrored reflection of God. We're made in his likeness because we have been given the freedom of choice. Nothing in the universe ever had that freedom. Satan never had that freedom. He'd left a long time ago. He wanted out of there. He said, if I could just do what I want to, I'd be like God. Everything in, in the universe has a habitat. That means like the stork that flies from Norway, stops at Israel, stays there for about two or three days and fertilizes the ground so the deserts will blossom like a rose. Then they go on down to North Africa for the winter. And they do that by habitat. When I go to Florida and take our little grandbabies down there on the beach, they, they always looking for those turtle nests and wonder what day they're going to hatch on. That turtle's going to lay there because that's where her mother, her grandmother, great-grandmother, and as far back as time goes, laid those eggs. Creatures of habitat, but not you. You're a creature of choice. You're here because you choose to be. You put on clothes that you wanted to wear. I mean, that, uh, that scarlet macaw, that big, beautiful red parrot is beautiful, but she don't ever get to change her outfit. She's going to wear red the rest of her life. That's the way it's going to be. So being creatures of choice in the likeness of God there was a tree that was set in the middle of the garden. And God said, look, you can have everything. But your decision making must be tested. And in the middle of that garden, he said, just don't, don't eat of this. You can have everything else you want. There was no other, there, he couldn't, it, he was in a, in a fault-proof environment. He owned everything, so he didn't covet Everything was his, why would he steal? He wouldn't run off with anybody, nobody run off with. And uh, he, he, was, he was in an environment just simply because we always wonder where's the origin of sin? You know, when we say the word sin, we think of a liquor bottle, we think of a lifestyle of perversion, we think of bad words people say and vulgar clothing that they wear. And all this is the product of sin. But sin comes when you exalt your thought above the thoughts of God and you believe you have a better way to live than God. And that's called pride. Pride is an independent, self-sufficient, I can do it on my own. You might say, well, I don't have pride. You know, in the old days, they said if you, you wore lipstick, that was proud. Well, I'm telling you right now, I can wash all the lipstick off but if you still wouldn't pray, you're proud. Just the fact that you don't pray means that you think you've got your own answers. I know people don't like to hear that, but we do have to preach the Bible. The fact that uh, you don't think you need to fellowship in the church or you don't need to have Christian in, uh, environment, you don't need to be hooked up to Christian uh, influence and teaching on the television, all that, it's just a spirit of pride that says that you think you can handle your life without God. And so when sin entered into the world and Adam and Eve are now shaking with fear, they're in, they're in fear. They didn't know what fear was. There wasn't no bottle of booze in the Garden of Eden. There wasn't no strip joint. There wasn't no pornography. It was willful disobedience to the Word of God. And all they had was one sentence. Just one sentence. That's all they had. They didn't have what we got today. They just had one sentence. 
And so in the Garden of Eden, shaking and cold, our Jesus, who is God in the Father, God in the Son, God in the Holy Ghost, God in God, he sacrificed animals. And you know I love this because the Bible doesn't say lambs and we believe it was a lamb. But the reason why the Bible doesn't say it's a lamb because following the next, next dispensation of God's power, when, when, you, when you get to the law, the law required a, a sacrifice. And when you get to the life of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, it was in the law that when you dedicate that little boy, when, when the mother had 40 days, when she was purified after 40 days, they'd go to the temple and they would uh, offer the baby up in dedication and a sacrifice. The law said use the lamb. But then the law said if you can't afford a lamb, just go get two pigeons. <laughs> oh, isn't the Lord wonderful? He said, I'm going to show you that my blood's going to be sufficient. So he never put lamb there because he knew there's going to be some people that will not have enough during the dispensation of the law. They wouldn't have enough. They couldn't afford it. But he said, I want you to have a substitutionary sacrificial offering. So God offers this substitutional sacrificial offering. He lays the bloody skins upon their back. And he says, if you're going to talk to me, you're going to come through the blood. So we know then Adam lives 930 years. People have asked me, do you think that Adam was sorry? How in the world could you not be sorry? Walking with God in the cool of the day, naming every created thing, naming the stars and naming the botanical flowers and shrubs, naming the astronomical stars that you could see, the geological stones. How in the world could you not feel that brokenness on the inside, especially when your firstborn murders your baby boy? And now you reach down and you pick your boy up. His lips are blue. His hands are cold. His skin is clammy. He's dead. He's been murdered by your son. Adam preached the message of creation. 930 years. He preached if you're going to know God, you're going to know him because he created the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea. He is the creator of all things in him. He is everything. He is the great creator. And he would preach that message. And if you're going to talk to this God, you're going to come through the blood because that blood is going to remind you that one day I, I made a terrible choice and I exalted my thoughts above God saw and every time I saw that blood it was a reminder Adam you're the one that sinned it wasn't God that sinned it wasn't the animal that sinned it wasn't anything but you you're the one that sinned so for 1,000 years the message of creation was preached and man responded but there was no consequence for sin can you believe that no consequence for sin so when people engage themselves in immorality, and they began to steal, and they began to lie. There was no consequence. I mean, they had a conscience, but their conscience wasn't alive. It's like us going home tonight. Now, when we go home, we're going to drive 75 north, and when we get on 75 north, uh, there's going to be certain spots on 75 that my conscience is going to come alive, because I remember the day driving 75 north uh, that blue lights were flashing behind me, but until the blue lights were flashing behind me, my conscience was dead. It didn't make any difference if I was going 95 or not. But now when I get to that certain spot and I'm, I'm past Berea and I'm getting into Richmond, I say, you better watch your, you better watch your speed right now because my conscience is alive. So the Bible said man's mind was on evil continuously. Every evil thing he did. He did bestiality. He did adultery. 
hatred. He did fornication. He did every vicious abortion. He did everything you could imagine. But the Bible said that Noah found grace. Oh, glory. We're getting ready to get into another dispensation. It's going out of 1,000 years of the dispensation of creation into the dispensation of conscience. And the word grace is used. And grace means God's action toward me. I don't deserve it. It's not because of my good deeds. It is the choice of God. It's God's choice. I don't want to annihilate mankind. He is my family. And as wicked as he has become, I want this man to be connected to me. So the flood came. That was the consequence for sin. And when Adam and his family, when they got off of that ark, the first thing Noah did, he said, bring me a substitutionary sacrificial offering. I was taught by the words of Adam that the God that created this earth, if I'm going to talk to him, I'm going to talk through the blood. It's by the blood and by nothing but the blood. And during this dispensation of conscience, you had people like Job that rose up. They never had a covenant like Abraham. There was no covenant made yet. Job was one of the patriarchs. He was one that only knew one way to get to God. That was to offer a sacrifice. That's why when Job children, when Job's children would get to have a birthday party and Job said just in case, just in case that they did something vile and evil, I'm going to offer a sacrifice for each one of them. I don't want them to be disconnected from God. But then the Bible said there was a man by the name of Abraham and he was sacrificing to God and God said, Abraham, oh Abraham, if you'll come out from among my people, your people, if you'll just come out, I'm going to bless you in the city. I'm going to bless you in the field. I'm going to have you an everlasting covenant. And in your seed, Abraham, in your loins, I'm going to send a Messiah. And in him shall all nations of the world be blessed. Now, here we go into another dispensation. And with this dispensation, the children of Israel go into Egypt, 70 souls, but they come out through three and a half million. And when they come out, Moses goes on Mount Sinai because the wickedness of the world was still so vile. And God began to give them commandments. Not just 10, brothers and sisters. He gave 613 commandments. He gave commandments about their social life. He gave commandments about their dietary life. He gave commandments about the clothes they would wear. He gave commandments about if you fall off of a roof. He gave commandments that if your if your piece of your cattle got loose and somebody gets hurt, this is what you were supposed to do. In the Garden of Eden, it was only one sentence. But when you get to the law, it was 613 commandments because God had to deal with that flesh. God had to deal with that carnal mind because that carnal mind always thinks it's too good. I don't need God's word. I don't need the fellowship of the saints. I don't need prayer. I don't need this and I don't need that. The flesh is always trying to convince God I'm just as good without the blood. But God said I'm going to put it in writing because there's none righteous. No not one. There is no one that can stand before a holy righteous God and say there's no iniquity in me. There is no one that can stand and say I've never had a bad thought. I've never done a bad thing. Every bit of this was pointing to Christ. And I want you to know from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, every bit of the Pentateuch is the 
testimony of Jesus. It's Jesus in Genesis. It's Jesus through Exodus. It's Jesus from the cover to cover. I said it's Jesus from one cover to cover. It's Jesus all the way. Everything that's been written has been written as a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And right now tonight, we are in one of the greatest battles. The battle isn't over transgender. The battle is over the word. The battle is not over that your teenager don't know if he's male or female. The battle is over the word. The battle isn't over your drunkenness. The battle is over the word. The battle isn't over the things that's going on in this world. But the battle is over the word. Because the word shall forever stand. When this world is on fire and darkness fails the sun, this word shall prevail because every jot, every tittle talks about my Savior, my Jesus, my wonderful God. Give God a shout of praise. Come on, praise him. Open up your mouth a little bit. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Mm. 1,000 years. The dispensation of conscience, I mean, of, of creation. Adam preaching. 1,000 years. The dispensation of conscience. It was known everywhere. No matter where you go, to what distant foreign place, every, almost every tribal group has a story of the flood. They have a story, they don't know the details, but they know water. <laughs> oh, it's gonna rain, children. God's gonna send the water from Zion. He's gonna raise the heavens up higher. It's gonna rain. Woo. It's gonna rain, children. God's gonna send the water from Zion. He's gonna raise the heavens up higher. It's gonna rain. Oh, God. Dispensation of creation. Dispensation of conscience. Everywhere they went. Everywhere they went. There's a consequence for your sin. Your conscience is speaking to you. You know you shouldn't be acting like that. You know you shouldn't be living like that. You know the filth that's on your internet needs to come off. You know, the, you know sitting in a cinema, listening to 50 times the F word and God's name used in vain. You know good and well that that's not right. You know good and well it's not right for you to go down to Florida and put a string up the backside of your body and shake your flesh all over that beach. Somebody said, now you're just getting it, taking it too far. No, 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 no. I'm telling you what, we have seared our conscience with a hot iron. God is a righteous God. He is a holy God. Just as sure as that rain began to fall, everything in that Bible is a testimony of Jesus. Jesus is part of the Godhead. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. That's why the ark had three levels. There was one level that had the door. Jesus said, I am the door, and no man can come to the Father except by me. That's why there's an upper window. That's why the Holy Ghost gives us access to this God. That's why the dove was released. It was released first upon the prophets, but the dove came home. It was released on Jesus, and it brought back the anointing, the olive branch. But the third time it was released, he never came back. And that's what we have in this service right now. Everything in this book is Jesus. Do you hear me? Everything in this book is Jesus. Our school system system 
Our school system has put it on the library shelf with, no, with uh, Aesop's fables. The school system. I was watching. Oh, I couldn't believe what I was watching. A father went to a school board meeting and he took his 11-year-old boy in middle school and he said, I want my son to read. I want him to read what he came home with this book. I want him to read it out loud. The little 11 year old boy began to read. It's about Nick and Charlie. These are two characters of the middle school. These are two boys that are 14 years old and they're, they're in a love affair. I don't know what you call it. They're in a lust affair and they're doing vile things. And as the boy began to read, he said we were playing. And then he said, we begin to make the moves. And, and I'm not going to tell anymore because that part gets terrible, even though it, it's just terrible. And then he said, he reached in the top dresser and he reached and pulled out a piece of birth control, which was only for sodomy. And I hate to talk like this in front of Holy Holiness people, but my goodness, if your little 11 year olds are getting into the public school, you need to know, brothers and sisters, we're in the biggest war we've ever been in our life. They want your seed. The devil wants your seed. He's, he's not, he don't care about Tommy Bates, but he don't want anybody to preach this word. He don't want this word to be preached. He don't want it to be lived. The reason why I lift my hands as the Bible says it. The reason why I speak in the the reason why I speak in tongues is because the Bible said they shall speak with new tongues. The reason why I lay hands on the sick brother, the reason why that somebody lay their hands on you is it's in the Bible they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and the reason why we cast out devils is because the word says it the word says it I want you to give God a great praise hallelujah Glory. 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 Everything. Everything is Jesus. Jesus. You thought he didn't show up till Matthew. You haven't been reading your Bible. He said before Abraham was. I was, I am from the beginning, I'm Alpha, I'm not a high I am Omega, I am the beginning and I am the end. The next move in this nation is going to be just like Europe, it's already headed that direction. I'm not against, uh, how can I say this without saying it, I just won't say it, let's leave it alone. All right. But all I can tell you is this, brothers and sisters. When I go to England, they said you can read a scripture, but don't you ever mention a gay lifestyle. Don't say that word. You don't, don't say gender identification. Don't say it from the pulpit. Don't say it. They'll run us out of here. They'll make a shutter church down. They'll put a sign up that says condemned and won't allow it. A little boy in our church, his parents don't come to church. His mom, he's a sing, raised by a single parent. His older brother, he's a hunk of a boy. He's six foot six. He's on scholarship at Thomas More, Thomas More College in Northern Kentucky. He brought his little brother and they just got introduced to this good way. Hallelujah. Oh, they're in that altar. Oh, they're praying. They're reading their Bible. Mama don't understand what's going on. What's going on down there at that Holy Roller? church. You're coming home and you're reading your Bible. You quit listening to that trashy music. What happened to you? You're, you're talking different. You're, all you want to do on your spare time is go to youth group. All you want to do is go to church. I don't know what to do with you. And the little 12 year old boy was in the school and when he was in, in school just a few days ago all at once the teacher said we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the transgender life and we're talking about choices of lifestyle and a little boy got up. He's 12. He said well 
I, I've realized that I, I was, should have been a girl. I realized that I'm a girl in a boy's body. And, and I'm gay because I, I don't want to be married to a woman. I want to be married to a man. He's 12 years old. He don't know what he wants in the first place. He said, I, I want to be married to a man. And she said, how do you think about it, class? And all of them start saying, well, I think you ought to just follow your heart. You ought to do what's in your heart. And that little 12-year-old boy that we baptized in the church, he's about that tall, that little blonde hair, blue-eyed thing. He, she said, well, what do you think? He said, well, I'll tell you what I think. is that I think what the Bible thinks. It's abomination under the Lord. You know what she said? She said, you out of this classroom immediately. She ran him to the office. You can curse in the public school. You can fight in the public school, but you're not allowed to say one thing against this global agenda. Brothers and sisters, we're getting ready for the most dangerous time that we've ever had. I said the most dangerous time. There may be a time you may be watching me on the internet and they may come in to arrest me, but until then, until then, as long as we've got a voice, as long as we've got something to say, we're going to declare the full works of Christ, that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is in everything. The dispensation of creation, a conscience of the law, 613 laws, and then the prophets, the last prophet that prophesied was Malachi, 400 years before the birth of Christ. Oh, Lord. They had went into Egypt. They had went into Babylonian captivity. In Psalms 137, while they were there, they said, oh, by the river of Babylon, there we sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. We wept, because now we were in captivity. Oh, we began to weep. We began to cry. Our freedom was gone. We began to cry. And according to history, and I've been going to Israel since 1972, in Babylon, they said the reason why we ended up in captivity is because we didn't know the book. They said, we're gonna put a synagogue Every time there's 10 males, 10 Jewish males, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Every time there's 10 males in a city, we're going to build a synagogue. And it's going to be for the purpose of opening up the Word of God. And then the Talmudic and the Mesoretic scribes, they were a group of people that said, We're going to give our life for the preservation of the Scripture. We're going to guard not one cross of a T, not one dot of an I is going to be touched. This was 400 or 500 years before the birth of Christ. That word could not be changed. That word could not be dealt with. It had to be in its perfection because when you see him, oh glory, when you see him, he's going to have a vesture, a robe that's dipped in blood. What kind of blood is it? It's Calvary's blood. And when I look upon him and I see him riding that white horse with that dipped blood vesture, every time I look at that blood. I'm going to say, yeah, that's what came to me when I should have fallen in the well at six years old. That's what came to me when I should have died. 1972. It's that blood that carried me through high school. Bill, it's that blood that carried me through my married life. It's that blood that I've raised my children with. It's that blood that my hair's grown white with. It's that blood that I've got age spots with. It's that blood that my skin is wrinkled with. And I'm telling you right now, when I see him, oh David, you're going to look at that vesture that's dipped in blood. 
and you're going to say one day that drop of blood it fell onto my body and healed me you should be a dead man and your wife should be a widow but look what the Lord has done I said look what the Lord has done oh we praise you Jesus Woo. 400 years so in every synagogue they read and they read and they read and they read not knowing that every word in there was Jesus every piece of every piece of parchment said Jesus that fourth man in the fire that's Jesus that one that wrestled with Jacob that's Jesus the captain of the Lord of hosts that appeared to Joshua, that's Jesus. That pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. That was nothing but my King Jesus, hallelujah. Sometimes you don't recognize him. Sometimes he's a cloud and sometimes he's a pillar of fire. Oh, but he's still the same. He's still God. God manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached on to the Gentiles and believed on in the world hallelujah from Genesis to Revelation it's Jesus it's Jesus every word is him hallelujah and we're going to be challenged they don't care what your doctrine is. Right before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord. Right before that my great-great-grandmother in Clay County, Kentucky, 1906, right before that outpouring, and she's picking peas, a Methodist. Her husband is... is Powell Markham. Yeah, he's the sheriff. The Holy Ghost had already fell in 1897 over North Carolina, but a hundred people they heard were speaking in tongues, but most of them were Cherokee Indians, and they said, ah, those Native Americans, they don't have any sense. They're a bunch of uneducated people. There's nothing to it. Oh, Lord. It went from North Carolina among the Cherokee, your people, Kathy. <laughs> oh. You look, look like right now one of them. Hallelujah. It went down through Tennessee. And in Tennessee, they started, <laughs> it went through the Cumberland Gap, went down the Red Bird Creek, the Red Bird River, and down in Clay County is where my great great grandmother, 1906, lost her English and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Because Joel said 700 years before the birth of Christ, he said, Before the earthquakes shake the earth off of its axis, before the tsunamis blast the cities off the coastline, before the meteor showers fall upon the earth, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. The spirit and the word are one. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Joel said... There's going to be an outpouring. There's going to be an outpouring. And you Appalachian people, before it ever hit Sister Agnes in Topeka, Kansas in 1901, before it ever hit Azusa Street in California, you had people that were speaking in tongues. And Brother Thee Carter, I had him to write some stuff down in his handwriting. And one of the things he wrote down to give to me, John gave it to me a, a few months ago. It's in Brother Carter's handwriting. He said, I want to tell you about the 
experience I had. He said, I was just a teenage boy, but I heard there was a man in Tennessee that had the Holy Ghost for over 40 years, that he'd received the baptism in 1897. He said, I rode my horseback into the deepest, darkest trails you could find. And when we got there, here the man came out with his hands raised up. He said, oh son, you've heard that I've been speaking in tongues for 40 years. He was shouting and shaking and speaking in tongues. He said, I got me three altars. I got one for my morning prayer. I got one for my noonday prayer. And I got the third one for my evening prayer. And that's how I keep the coals of fire burning in my life. My great-grandmother, Almeda Sizemore from Clay County, she had 16 children, but I was only eight years old when she went to heaven. And I remember mom taking us to Ma'am's and at Ma'am's house, even when she was old and feeble, Bill, so old she couldn't hardly, couldn't had to have help to get around. As soon as it was time for the noonday prayer. She'd slide out of that rocking chair and there she'd lay and she'd be, oh Lord, save my children, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and as many as are afar off. Oh, brothers and sisters, do you realize how blessed you are right now where we are seated? I said right now where we are seated, the seeds of Holy Ghost have been planted here years and years ago and some of them have, some of them are seemingly dead. They're not producing anything, but all it takes is just a shower from heaven. I said all it takes is a shower from heaven. That's all it takes. And I, I don't, I do remember this now that you told me last night. I, I was preaching the, the camp meeting for the Tennessee Church of God. And in the middle of that camp meeting, was it there or somewhere else? Maybe it was a camp meeting. I'm not sure if it was there in North Carolina where I was, but right in the middle of the service, all at once I shot out my voice and I said, La Follette, Tennessee. I don't know why I said La Follette, Tennessee, but I'm apt to believe that when you walked in here, the tear stains of the holiness people, and when you walked through Virginia, the tear stains of the people of God, when you walked through and you came from Knoxville, from Chattanooga, wherever you came from, this whole Appalachian mountain area is covered with Holy Ghost seed. And I'm telling you, if the rain of heaven touches this seed, it's going to produce the most powerful, the most powerful demonstration of the Holy Ghost that the world has ever seen. And most of the world didn't know anything about you until I got on Brother Swagger's. Paul Crouch learned about it and he, asked, he said, I want you to get on TV and the whole world needs to know what happened in the mountains. And he got Matt and Lori and he said, Matt and Lori, I've got to get this message around the world. They, Matt said, Dad, we'll make sure it gets around the world. Paul died and it stopped. And I'm not saying that critical. I'm just telling you the facts. There's something in this air You've been beaten. You've had family members die in coal mines. You've had children die in car wrecks. Drugs has come and invaded your homes. You hear me? But before this outpouring came, the evil one said, I'm gonna mess with their mind. Because if they get that word, if they get that word, that word is gonna cause showers blessings showers of blessings we need oh mercy drops round us are falling oh for the showers we gotta have it But what happened in America? America is very, very important. Very important in history because 80% of the world's wealth is in your borders. 
Oh, they can talk about all the other people, but it's the truth. You control 80% of the world's wealth. And it's mostly owned by the Jews. But in 1879, in Pennsylvania, the Jehovah Witness came up with their doctrine to dilute the Bible. They said Jesus is not God before, well that's enough right there, you ought to shut the book. You might say, well, they're mighty good people. They're mighty wrong people. I'm not judging their behavior, whether they're good or bad. There's good Islamic people. I'm with them all the time in the Middle East. Some of the best Islamic people you'd ever meet. Not all of them are blowing people up with, 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 with bombs. They said Jesus is not God. Before he lived on earth, he was Michael, the archangel. Jehovah made the universe through him. On earth, he was a man who lived a perfect life after dying on a stake, not a cross. He was resurrected as a spirit. His body was destroyed. Jesus is not coming again. He returned invisibly in 1914 in spirit. And very soon, he and the angels will destroy everyone who is a non-Jehovah witness. Lie, lie, lie. Do you believe this to be the truth? Then when I say lie, say amen. At least get a good Baptist amen out of this. I said lie. 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 Come on, you can't be a coward. I'm trying to warn you, brothers and sisters. We're going to be tried by this word. We're going to be tried because of the Bible. The Mormons came in. I know they own hotels, and I think Coca-Cola and a lot of other things. They say they don't, but they do. They said Jesus is a separate God from the Father, Elohim. He was created as a spirit, by, a spirit child by the father and mother in heaven. Wonder who the mother is. And is the elder brother of all men and spirit beings. His body was created through sexual union between Elohim and Mary. You know those Mormons would say that as much as they love polygamy. And don't be so empty-headed when your grandson comes in and says, you know what, I've been reading the Mormons and they've got some really good stuff. And you say, oh, you know, at least he's going to church. Come on, come on. Come on, Grandma. Quit trying to cover up the sins of your children and grandchildren. You don't have to be mean, but you have to tell them there is a fountain filled with blood that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. I'm not going to read any more of those. All I'm trying to tell you is every major religion that has happened since the late 1800s has come to tell you that Jesus is not God manifest in the flesh. But I'm here to defy every bit of that in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you one day he's coming back. Every knee shall bow tongue shall confess he's going to have a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God the word of God if you love Jesus you're going to love your word if you love him he, he and the word are one because everything in this word talks about him let's stand our feet and let's give God a praise for the word tonight Hallelujah. Kia G. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You may be here, you're broken hearted, and your cross is so hard to bear on your knees. Call on Jesus. I know Jesus. He'll meet you there. You'll cry holy. Holy, holy. You'll lift your hands and say, Lord God, 
God, you're worthy. Just go away, da 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 da. Go away, somewhere to pray. Harley Hensley's wife, this was her song when I was a little boy. I went away, I went away, one day to pray. Oh, I went away, I went away, one day. was bowed down beneath the weight but I went away I went away one day to pray I can tell you something for 51 years when my back's been up against the wall when all hell came against me and at other times came against my family and other times came against the church. I'd walk in that church by myself. I'd walk in by myself. And I didn't even think I could make it to the front. <laughs> but I went away. I went away. One day to pray. <laughs> You know why I went to pray? Because that Bible tells me to, where to go. That Bible tells me where to go. That Bible says, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. That Bible said, he's my healer, my doctor, my lawyer. If you need something from the Lord tonight, just come on up to this altar, present yourself, and we're gonna go before the Lord in prayer and these other pastors and preachers, you can help me pray. If not, we'll dismiss and go home and I'll make my run to Northern Kentucky. I was wounded. Broken hearted, bowed down beneath the weight, but I went away, I went away to pray. Brother, you got a microphone, you sing something. Anybody play a piano like that ought to be able to sing. Oh, Kathy, that song you sung last night, He's My Lily in My Valley. What you need, sister? In the name of Jesus. Lord, this sister's standing in the need. She's calling on your name, Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to open up the floodgates of heaven. We have the freedom to pray in Jesus' name. We have the freedom to call on Jesus' name. Now we thank you, Lord, because we know you're gonna release the glory upon her life. We thank you, God, because you're gonna move in Jesus' name. I'd like for every preacher and every pastor, I feel like doing something different. I want the pastors and preachers, if you'll come up here, all of you that are ministers, evangelist ministers, you can face the front if you want. You'll have to face them. We're going to, you, you, you can stand here and face that way if you want. Just back up a little bit so we can get to you to pray. No, we don't need them. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I believe the Spirit will draw people when people don't run to the altar. When I was at Brother Swaggers, they started running before I ever got finished preaching. So I have to, I have to look at the climate. I have to look at the climate and then hear the verse, voice of the Lord. Nobody's running to the altar to get saved. But I know that you preachers are going to face some troublesome times. But look what's happened. A president that has opened the door to everything, but yet the Supreme Court voted in our favor. Don't, don't listen to what political parties say 
You stick to that word. And when it looked like everything was falling apart and the worldly church was getting ready to take over, all at once right in the middle of all that worldliness in Asbury, teenagers by 20,000, 25,000, they have no idea what the count is. They're leaving that university and I think, I think some of it broke out at Lee is what I heard, is that right? Some of it broke out at Lee, some of it's broken out at different places. Robbie's got more information on that. But I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask God to give us the grace to navigate through some of the roughest waters. But in the roughest waters, brother, is when he says, peace be still. In the fiery furnace is where he comes and takes the sting of the fire away. When Pharaoh's breathing down your neck and it looks like a Red Sea is gonna choke you alive, that's when God just splits it right in two. So Father, in the name of Jesus, could I get some oil? I'm just gonna put a little touch of oil on you. And anybody else, I want you to pray for these ministers because it's certainly not easy. And what we're gonna face will not be easy. So as brother sings, I want you to stretch your hands. We're gonna believe that God in this geographic area is gonna cause a resurrection of dead seeds to come alive in Jesus' name. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we anoint with oil. Let this testimony be heard around the world. Let every cancer victim, God, let everyone that's diagnosed with cancer hear this wonderful report that God is on the throne. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, there's an open door in front of you. <laughs> the key of David's in your hand. <laughs> yeah. Touch everyone, oh, touch these ministers, Lord. Oh, ho, 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 Jesus. every Methodist, every Nazarene, every Church of God, every Assembly of God, Lord. Fresh oil. Let fresh oil, God, come on build tonight. Fresh oil, Lord. Oh, you didn't drive two hours just for friendship. Lord, let fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil from the Word. Oh, oh, God. Lord, the open door, the open door, the open door. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shakoba Bahara Bahara Kataya. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let the word burn like fire. Shut up in their bones, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Let the ministry of God. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory. Oh, touch in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. Sound me about a key of G. I sang this last night and I'm going to sing it again because the Bible said with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak unto my people where the weary shall find rest. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest, I'm going to rest, I'm going to rest, I'm going to rest, after I have done my best, I'm going to rest, rest, rest on Jesus' breast, oh, I'm going to rest, I'm going to rest. I'm gonna rest after I have done my best. I'm gonna rest, rest, rest on Jesus' breast with stammering lips and another tongue. I'll speak to my people till the battle is won. Just hold on, make your stand. Just rest, rest, rest on Jesus' breath. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. After I have done my best, I'm going to rest, rest, rest on Jesus' breath. You know, that's an old song. I'm not going to sing it anymore. I got to go Louisiana Thursday and Friday. <laughs> I got to preach heavy duty down there. So I got to conserve my voice. But now if the Lord was on me, I'd keep on singing. But I can't build a fire right now. You understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing. I think we had all opportunity tonight to build one. And I think the fire of God has touched our hearts. Praise the Lord. But... You know, when, when uh, the Shu, Shunammite, not Shulamite, the Shunammite woman, when she built that apartment, she said, put a bed in it, a stool, a candlestick, bed, stool, candlestick, and a table. Table's the table of power. He set before me a table in the presence of my enemies. The stool, actually, the translation is throne chair. It's where you learn your praise. That apartment is the prayer room, by the way, because that's where, that's where Elisha comes, and he's a type and shadow of the Holy Ghost. And the, the table, power, the throne chair is the stool, and the candlestick is direction. 
If we went more and got a hold of that candlestick, we wouldn't be stubbing our feet all the time. And the last one is the bed. It's the bed of rest. The Bible said in prayer, there's a place you can go when you've ceased from your labors. And I'm there right now. Meaning I can't do anything else about this building I'm getting ready to build. We're having a prayer meeting on Monday, the 20th. It's going to be a miracle. I don't know where it's coming or how it's coming. I had a meeting before I came down here and I got one tomorrow. I got to meet with, meet with this company again. We're telling them to go on just like we got every bit of it. And uh, hallelujah. And after you've done all you know to do, you have to go find that bed because he that finds the rest ceases from his own labors. And there comes a time when you prayed all you can pray about your kids and done, you, you stand in faith and believe, but you have to just step back and rest in the Lord. So that's where I'm headed right now. We thank you so much for, for and join us online if you want to on Monday the 20th. We're going to be praying about several different things. But thank you so much for your attendance, for your giving. We got some product back there. I forgot about it, but uh, uh, it's back there. <laughs> Is, is there a Baptist preacher in here? Where? You? He go. He pastors the Baptist church. Is there a pastor of a Baptist church here? Don't be afraid. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I'm not going to get you messed up like Bill. I don't know why I keep on. I just felt like there's a. But, you know, that's my feelings. Evidently, it's not the Lord. So let's go on. Thank you for being here. We love you all. And I'll turn it over to the pastor. God bless you, my brother. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah and give the Lord a hand clap off. Man, I'm telling you, these two nights have been something, haven't they? Presence and the power of God. Tomorrow night, evangelist John Carter. I call him Fireball. He's going to be here too, and so, and then on uh, Thursday night, our state overseer is going to be here, and then on Friday night, the state youth director is going to be here. But don't you appreciate Pastor Tommy Bates coming from Northern Kentucky and being with us? <laughs> Praise God. You know, he was talking about being over in Israel. We're getting ready to go to Israel in May. We're going to go over uh, the 4th through the 13th. And I'm just going to throw this out there at you. We have got one space open. We've got a lady that's ready to go, but she needs another lady to room with her. And if you know of a, a woman that's got a, a burden or a vision to go to Israel, tell her to contact our church here. and we'll, we'll get her the information. We need to do it as soon as we possibly can. God bless you. We love you. Thank God for you. Have a little bit of fellowship here. Love on each other. Pray about tomorrow night's service. Come back if you can, same time, 7 o'clock. God bless you. Sick 
pressed her way through the crowd. She believed the man could make her whole. She reached and touched his garment, was healed by the Lord. Shout happy, she made her way whole. Where well, Holy Ghost power like the mighty wind is blowing. Holy Ghost power like the mighty wind is blowing. Holy Ghost power like the mighty wind is blowing. Revival's in the land today. Legion was a wretched man, so helplessly bound. Tormented by old Satan every day He dwelt among the tombs Driven by the devil to be free There seemed to be no way Legion fell before Jesus Who had Holy Ghost power Overflowing within his soul Jesus cast the demons out of old Legion Set free, dressed him up Sent Legion Forever. What he did back then, he still does today. God still can.